All right, the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. If you believe that, give me an amen. amen. All right, we are going to take our seats in a moment. Uh, again, welcome to today's School of Prayer. We have been praying for some time. But as is our custom, we are going to study for some time. Then we will resume praying. All right? Now, before we start studying, we take our declaration of understanding, as we always do. If you are ready for that, give me an amen. amen. All right, do it from the bottom of your heart. One to let's go now, I declare. Now I declare that the Lord has given me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And I'm being filled with the knowledge of his will, in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. As a result of this, I'm walking in a manner worthy of the Lord, I'm pleasing him in all respects. I'm bearing fruit in every good work, and I'm increasing in the knowledge of God. Now again, I incline my ears to his word. The word is entering my heart. It is giving me light and direction. It is healing me in every area, and it's making me more and more like the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right, the Lord is good. Let's take our seats. Uh, once again, welcome to today's school of prayer. And um, I think I want to start from a particular portion of the scriptures from the book of Isaiah. Open your Bibles quickly to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Well, let me see whether it's 45 or 46, but it's in between the two. All right, so we're going to read both of them. Isaiah chapter 45, the bottom of it. And then we'll go into 46. All right, Isaiah chapter 45. I read from verse 20, even though what I want is the end of that chapter and the early part of 46, but because my Bible breaks it in verse 20, I will um, take it from there. Gather yourselves and come. Draw near together, you fugitives of the nations. He said, they have no knowledge who carry out their wooden idol and pray to a God who cannot save. Declare and set forth your case. Indeed, let them consult together. Who has announced this from of old? Who has long since declared it? Is it not I, the Lord? And there is no other God besides me. Please listen to this. He said, who has declared these things from of old? He says, I, the Lord, who did it. He said, there is no other God apart from me. I'm a righteous God and a Savior. There is no God except me. Turn to me and be saved. Now, please notice that verse 22 carefully. Now, I think we have to go back to 21 again. He said, there is no other God besides me. Your president is not God. Your nation is not God. Nothing around you is God. What does it mean by God? God refers to the source of your sustenance, the source of your security, the source of your well-being, the source of every good thing around you. When we say God, that's what we mean. He said, I am God and there is none other. So he said, what do you do? He said, I'm a righteous God. And a savior. When you see the word righteous, it means that everything I do is right. I hope you're getting my point. Many times people have tried to imply that God is not righteous. And what do they mean by that? They sit down and judge the things that happen on the earth. There's a particular man. Um, I didn't even know he was late. I thought he was still alive because I see his videos. He celebrated atheist a journalist, who I look at him and it's in his videos. I've heard his quotes. I never read any of his writings, but I see his quotes here and there. And I just said, this is an angry man. And why, was he, why is he angry? One day I saw him debate um, the British scientists. And one of the things he said, you could see from his statement, was that he was angry that if indeed there is God, there is a bad one. I don't know whether you're getting my point. He said everything he makes is failing. He described the dwarf stars. He said some things which I knew before then, all right, that if this, our sun lives long enough, that is the sun that we are revolving around on a daily basis, 
after some billion, a few billions of years more, the fuel will finish because it's burning fuel. It's burning, I think, in hydrogen. So when they to finish, it's going to expand. That's what they all do. All right? It's going to expand. And when it's expanding, it will swallow all the planets around it and come very close to the earth and maybe swallow the earth too. And by that time, it will fry everything that's on the earth. So it's angry that if God made a star, why can't he make it to live forever? Why does he have to finish one day and then destroy the earth around it? And I feel like tapping, of course, by that time he wasn't alive. I was just watching an old video. And I feel like tapping, has it, has it crossed your mind that he timed it? That he wants it to come to an end one day. He's angry about men. You see, the man, I just said this guy believes. You know, like I've told you many times. There are very few people on this earth who sincerely do not believe in God. They are extremely few. And usually they are inexperienced with life. They are very young. They are like 18, 19, 22, maybe 25 at most. Usually beyond that age, they've discovered that they must, I mean, they've discovered God. That they can be rebelling against him. And most of those young people, they grew up in total ignorance if they are like that. Or they are angry with their father. Usually it's their father. And you know, when you are angry with your father, and he's a person that God actually gave to represent God to you, you tend to transmit it to God and then reject God. That's a typical thing. All right? It's, it's not new. I mean, I didn't tell you something I just discovered yesterday. No, everybody knows it. All right? Hmm. Now, everybody knows, all right? They, they, know, they, they know God. They just don't follow him. I, I don't like to say there is God. You know, I feel so diminished. It's an insult. I, I hope I get my point. <laughs> Now, the point I'm trying to make about all of that is this. Why are people angry with God? They just don't like the way he's done some things. Yeah, when they discover him, they are angry that why did he do it this way? That's what their problem is a lot of times. This man that's quite is celebrated now, the black American physicist. The other day, I saw him describe that we must be living in a simulation. And by the time he was done with that description, I said, this guy has just proven to me he knows somebody made what we're experiencing now. Yet he still tells you that he doesn't believe in God. Don't be a joker. You say we're in a simulation, then there must be a simulator. It's obvious somebody planned it. But why are they all angry with God? They don't like the way he does things. We Christians, at the point in time, we reacted and gave them a lying explanation. I'm sorry, okay. I withdraw the word lying. I apologize about that. Because lying gives the impression you're trying to deceive. We give them a false explanation. That's a better word. Because it's not true. We say, no, 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 it's not God's fault. It's not God's fault. It's the devil's fault. That things are scattered now because of the devil. That is the God of this world. We took that 2 Corinthians chapter 4 stuff out of context. Being the God of this world doesn't mean it controls everything on this earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Doesn't control, Satan doesn't control everything. Satan still has to go before the judgment seat of God every time to get authority. That's why God said, from whence have you come? He said, from running to and fro. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? And, and he said, you have made it impossible to go around him. So it, it doesn't control everything. He has to fight each time to gain something. And he gains. And how does he gain when people deliver to him? I hope you're getting my point. People deliver to him. So if I am the, okay, like I have a home, I'm the boss, I can deliver it to Satan. And many people have done it. People do it every day. That's when he becomes the God of this world. Like the other time we talk about People prophesying by Baal. You can deliver your church over to Satan. In which you are prophesying there by Baal. Then Satan will now be the God that they are actually coming to serve in that place. I hope you're getting my point. So we turned around and gave an explanation that, no, it's not God though, it's the devil. He's one in control. If you ever see a tsunami, it's the devil. We know it's not true. The greatest tsunami that ever occurred on this earth occurred when? It's not really a tsunami, but you know, the flood that covered everywhere occurred when? Huh? Answer now, why are you whispering? No, as flood. Was it the devil that caused it? 
It was not the devil. It was not the devil. Disasters come once in a while, and they are not the devil. It's God that's angry. Now, what we don't tell them, okay, which is where I'm going, is that he is a righteous God. If they see what is wrong, don't tell them it's the devil. Tell them the soul that sins is shut down and is dying. The people on the earth sinned against God and they have invoked his judgment. Don't, call, don't tell them it's the devil. Be bold to tell them. They came to Jesus Christ and told him, did you hear what happened? Some bandits raided a village somewhere in the middle belt of Nigeria and killed 15 people. I know what he said. The devil is in charge. One day I will drive him out. No. He said, do you think they are the worst of sinners? Now, let's say exactly what he said in Jerusalem. He said, what? What did he say next? Answer me. Nobody here knows what he's talking about. Except you repent, you will likewise perish. And he described two things that happened. One was an accident. A building collapsed. A t- the tower of Siloam collapsed and killed people. It's like we are building a building and it comes down. And they came to him and said it. He said, except you repent, you will likewise perish. Then some people annoyed Pilate. And while they were offering their sacrifice, he came and, like the Bible says, he mingled their blood with that of their sacrifice. They were offering sacrifices to God. Yet he killed them at the end of the day. We, didn't know, we don't know which one was the blood of the bulls and goats they brought or their own blood. And Pilate and his soldiers walked away. And they came to Jesus. Look at what Pilate's soldiers did. And he said, you think they are the worst of offenders? The interpretation is quite complex, but I won't go there now. But he said, except you repent. What will happen? You will, and he was talking to the people of God. But you know what we will say? It's the devil that sent Pilate. The building collapsed because the devil is the God of this world. So he shook the foundations of the earth. No, Jesus said, except, let's take the words of the Lord. He said, except you repent, you will do what? Likewise spirit. So every time you see natural disaster, every time you see a free fall of your currency, Every time you see hunger suddenly in the land, as we're coming out, my children must have noticed, occasionally I'll break into laughter. Then I'll apologize to them, I'm sorry. My mind was just running up and down. And I'll tell you some of the reasons why I was laughing. I'll just break into laughter by myself. I see something's wrong with me. Then I turn to them and say, I'm really sorry, I'm just thinking about something. When you see suddenly food, like food just seems to disappear. I had to explain to my son as we're coming, say, what is going on? I said, I had to explain to him how it worked. One of the reasons why food is scarce and government is re- releasing stores of grain. They have, they have stores, strategic stores. Every country that's planned, all right, has it. And if you've ever driven to Abakliki, all right, on your left, halfway between here and Abakliki, you see these huge silos there. That's one of those strategic stores. They stack it full of grain. So if you don't harvest anything for some time, there will be no food to go around the country. They have them all over the country like that. So when they open it, they actually can crash the price of food in the market. That's how nations behave. So if you heard that the government a few days ago ordered the release of grain, they're not going to manufacture it. It's stored. Those things you see are dotted all over the country. Now, this is where I'm going. So you see, some, sometimes things just happen. So the grain disappears. But if you want to know why, well, I don't want to talk too much of uh, economics. But one of the reasons why it's disappearing now is that suddenly it's more profitable to move it and sell it in Cameroon. Move it and sell it in Niger. Move it and sell it in Chad. Move it and sell it in... No. So now things are going the other way. Instead of smuggling rice to the country, it doesn't make sense now. They take the one that is there and smuggle it out and go and sell. You make more money. So when it happens, they go, they go to Jesus. Rice that I bought last week for 30000 I went back today to buy. They say it's forty five. What's going to happen? Jesus says, except you repent, you will likewise go hungry. So anytime you see trouble like that, it's just one word God is giving us. What is what? Give me that word. Repent. What is that word? Repent. Say, let me hear it. Repent. That's it. You know, the gospel, the Bible calls it foolishness to man. I got a compliment today. Somebody gave me a compliment. He looked at me. Wow, you're looking very handsome. No, that's not what happened. What's the compliment? He said, Banky, that's your smile because... It was my classmates. They said something, I dropped something, I put a smile there. He said, that smile gives me the impression this thing is not affecting you. And you know, I said, God, thank you. 
Now, the man who said it was the one that told me one day he lost a hundred million naira in a deal. I've never seen a hundred million naira. I'm talking about losing it. <laughs> and I'm talking about, the one he's talking about is like six, seven years ago. The same person said, it looks like this is not affecting you. I said, no, it's not. I said, I'm not buying anything. Now, I don't want to go into the reason what led to it. But I laughed. Because I said, oh, people are really worried. So I said, oh, and I'm not. Now, I'll tell you something that came to my mind at the time. If I have not discussed with my wife, she may as well hear it now. So when all all this crash in value, I I tell my wife, I say, wait, I think we have money here and there. I think it's time to go and throw it away because, yeah, I'm not kidding. It's better to share the money out because you can't stay in there and be losing value. That was what came to my mind. He's not going to hide it. Hide what? Because zero cannot lose value. And I'm not joking. I, this, I, just, I'm not talking about it. I thought about it for some days. I said, any money you have somewhere, I mean, let's find how you could just uh, spread it in and let somebody have his of mind. It was when this guy told me today, he said, Banky, the way you, he said, that smile you dropped in that your comment. It's as if you're not bothered. I said, no, no. Actually, I am not. I absolutely, I am not. When you see things like this, eh, God says, it's a sign, it's a call for repentance. Now, there's something that came to my mind, which is why I kept on laughing. I told you I was laughing with my kids. I was laughing my, to myself. I had to apologize to my children. We're driving the car together down for this meeting. I know what came to my, why I kept on laughing. I realized that this life is complex. And let me tell you something I said the other day about the wisdom of God. It's not a discovery. Wisdom of God is planned. What I mean is this. If you say 2 plus 2 plus 2 is give, give, give us 6, you divide by 2, it will give us 3. All right? And you are planned to use to arrange some things. And you get there, and instead of getting 3, you get 0. Okay? You now look closer at the calculus behind it, the set theory that you use to arrive at your figure. When you look closer, you discover the reason where you made a mistake, and the, the outcome should be 0. Now, this is where I'm going. For you, it's a discovery. You learned a new theory. I hope you're getting my point. But for God, when you began to do that calculation, he threw a, a law inside it and said, what this man is doing must come to zero. How did it come to zero? You will discover later. Then when you find that it came to zero, you're like, ah, wait, this was where we made the mistake. No, you didn't make any mistake. It was that as you were calculating, the law released a word, or you activated a word that has been released. That says this arrangement must come to zero. When it came to zero, you went and looked closer and saw a law that you omitted. Now, you didn't omit it. It wasn't there. You didn't know it was there. It was not really active in your case. If you had been blessed, that law would have been withdrawn in your case and that equation would have worked. What am I trying to say? I look at what happened in Nigeria recently. And one of the reasons why I was laughing, and I'm telling you about this, my laughter. Is that I was repenting and laughing at myself. Because even I fell for it. I'll give an example. I fell for, on a national scale, I fell for a number of things. One, that the day the Angote refinery starts to produce, Naira will strengthen. You've heard me say it. Those of you who chat closely, even someone I'm preaching, you know I believed it. When they said we're removing subsidy, my friend rushed, in, about $10,000 he rushed in to Nigeria quickly, so we could get as much value for it. It was a scholarship project they got the money for, happening in Nigeria. So the money was with him. He quickly sent the money. He said, because before Naira strengthened so much that we'll get little for it. The money has almost, the value has almost doubled since. That's reduced by half. We would have gotten more if he waited for a few more months. But he didn't want to. Why? Because every rule of economics that we knew said it should go this way. Except that under our very eyes, it's going the other way. And they were now looking back. People are now writing new theories. Uh, it is because the state governments now have more money and they're now taking their money to buy dollar. I, see, new theories are now being written. Which we did not envisage all this while. So I started laughing at myself and all those who believe like me. Not believe the word of God, though, some economic theories. I said, laughing. God said, I'm a righteous God, and 
a savior. Now, please, I need to go back a step. He said, there is no other God besides me. If there is no other God, there is no other savior. I'm a righteous God and a savior. Remember, there is no other God. So I'm the only God, the righteous God, and the only savior. He said, there is none except me. I'm still reading. In verse 22, he now said, "Turn for this reason, turn to me if you want salvation. All the ends of the earth. For there is no other God but me. There is no other savior but me. Anything I have done, I have done in righteousness. So if you want salvation, you have to activate my righteousness to get it. Church in Nigeria, listen to me. I pray you are listening to this. Please, send this. If you have to type it by yourself, send it to somebody. Thus says the Lord. This crisis will continue until a critical mass amongst the people say, or a critical mass says, there is no savior but God. Right now they are not saying it. They are still waiting for the CBN to do something. They are still waiting for the head of state to do something. And one day the CBN got up and made a lot of noise. All banks, how can you store dollar? Go inside the dollar. They sold the dollar. Naira crept in the good direction for about 24 hours. I laughed that time. I said, this will not last. That was a pure common sense. And of course it didn't last. It didn't make sense it wasn't going to last. Then nobody showed the video. I didn't bother watching it. Of uh, EFCC and Abuki's selling dollar, fighting. I said to not last. You know what's going to happen to everybody? We must get to the point of what? Frustration. Yes, we must. We will. A point will come. Everybody will be frustrated. Let me tell you three people that will be frustrated. Number one, the head of state. They will go to him and say, help us, O Lord the King. Say from where? Is it from the external reserve? From where? He's the first person that will be frustrated, which I, I think he is already, which is a good sign. If he's frustrated by now, we are closer to salvation. The next set of persons that will be frustrated are the policymakers, the CBN governors, the economists, the advisors. They say, oh God, we don't know what else to do. We don't know what is driving this. I don't want to give you, uh, waste time now trying to analyze how one critical thing, two critical things that somebody explained to me is driving every other thing. But I know it's spiritual. So that's why I won't waste your time. And the third and most important group that must be frustrated and their frustration must lead them in the right direction. And is that the one the Lord is waiting for? Is who? The people of God. Thank you. The church. God said, I will push you until you say, God, please now. I read the story of one young woman. She was, you know, there are some habits they have abroad we don't have in Nigeria. Some people just get up, say, wants to go and hike. You know where they go hiking? Just want to walk, climbing mountains in the woods. Anyway, sometimes they run into bears. So sometimes they, so when they are going for those things, they carry their Beer, repellent, can. All the, they have a bit of training on how if a bear attacks you, what to do. Now, let me tell you something about bears. They generally are four, five times your size. With that, they run three times as fast as you. So you can't outrun a bear. You can't even outrun a dog. I'm talking about the bear. I hope you're getting my point. Huh. So those are a number of things you. Huh. Of course, they have a very sharp scent. Many of us don't know that they, they smell better than dogs do. They have a very sharp sm- sense of smell. But anyway, the first two things especially put together means that if the bear doesn't like you, you're dead meat. And this young woman, I think she was riding a bicycle, bicycle or something. She ran into a bear. She did everything she had been taught. Okay, one of the things you do with a bear is you play dead. They don't attack dead things. The attack, bear attacks you, you are taught to just rest entirely. It will shake you like a rag doll, don't move. Just after a while, it will drop you. Hope you're not dead by that time. You might survive. <laughs> of course, the first things you do, your, your can, you try and spray the, the, the bear, to irritate it. They don't, it's not, it's not, they don't eat human beings. I okay, I'm my hands. So 
I just hope to run away. Maybe just run into it, just get angry. Maybe sometimes it's a mother robbed of his cob, so just sees the first. They are different. Anyway, I'm hearing the story. So this young woman did everything. Played dead and everything. The beer didn't let go. Had it claws, his teeth, everything on this girl. Then father, she just said, God, please. As soon as she said it, I read this in the digest. She, as soon as she said that, the bear dropped her, turned around and walked away. She said, God, please help me. She said, as soon as those words came out of her mouth, the bear dropped her, turned around and walked away. You know what? She didn't say that until her bear repellent can had failed her. She did not say it until she had played dead and buried and the bear did not go away. Then suddenly she said, what else will I do? God help me. I read a story. This was in, I think, a BBC. Yes, BBC. Another interesting story. This girl was brought up without any rules. To say morals would be like she knew what is right, she's not. She, no. She grew up in you know, a black family, no father. She was born out of wedlock, did not have any man in her life to tell her anything. She was living with her grandmother. Then she got pregnant and had a baby. And the grandmother told her it's time for her to go and walk to feed the baby. I'm telling you, that's what the grandmother said. I know what she started doing prostitution. And her logic was that all the men that used to come to see her mother. They used to do these things to her, not pay anything. Why don't just collect some money? And that's what her friends advised her. And that's how she lived. Until some, what do you call them? Some bad boys, like gang, what do you call it? Cult boys decided that, ah, you can't be, you need protection. Make a long story short. That's how she got further and further into the whole thing. And then one day, a man picked her up. And she annoyed the man and the man threw her out of the car. Now listen to this. As he threw her out of the car, he closed the door and trapped her dress and did not know and drove off. She was wearing a flowing gown. So the man said, get out of my car. As he pushed her physically, opened the door and pushed her and closed the door and trapped her clothes and dragged her down like two streets before the cloth finally tore and she was free. By that time, she was what? Blooded, bruised. Badly injured. People picked her up and rushed her to the hospital there and called the police. The nurses were attending to her when the policeman arrived. The policeman took a look at her and recognized her. Ah, I said this one. I don't know where I get my point. Like this one. That isn't a serious matter. I'm sure she took somebody's money. And the man beaten like this. The policeman stood there and was now toasting the nurse and left her in pain. Her wounds unattended. He and the nurse were talking. So she looked at them and realized she meant nothing. Now, why am I talking about it? Then for the first time in her life, she prayed and said, God, help me. I come to her words and God acted fast. One young doctor just walked in, sharp, sharp, looked at her. What's the problem? Took the history, attended to her wounds, listened to her story, took good care of her and gave her a note. Call this number. Tell them I sent you. Next day, she called the person, and they took her in. Rehabilitated her. The time she was telling that story, she was a married woman. She said, God acted fast. She just finished praying. A doctor just walked. I think it was the next morning. One doctor just walked in. Hey, what's going on? And that's it. Now, I read this story in BBC. They, did not, they didn't redact that line. If it's BBC and uh, CNN now, they will remove it. Some people that go, oh, go. <laughs> let me not say okay, anything. BBC left it there. She said, God acted fast. One reason why we don't have help, we have not called to God. So you know what God is doing? Lord, won't you help them? They don't want my help. But they want help. Tell them to ask for it. If they don't ask, they won't get it. And you know, Christians, we hardly ask. And I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, God says, wait, I will push all of you to a corner until, like that girl that the beard took, you will say, help me. Usually at such times, help don't finish. 
I'm making up my point. Let me give an example. Many people are saying that once Buhari leaves power, God says, she has left now. The only thing we need is local production of refined products. God says, no problem. Dangote, start. But I call refineries working. Dangote is working. Many refineries, modular refineries are now pumping fuel. fuel. That's refined products. It is the very year they started that crisis began. Say, what else is your hope? Say, eh, 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 God, be cool. <laughs> because this is what I said, should have said at the beginning. Did I have to push you to this extreme? There's a message I have preached by Derek Prince. He called it a prayer of desperation. He called a particular scripture. I won't bother to read it now. I can't really remember, but there I can find it in my minute, but let me not waste time. In which the people of God were being attacked. They were attacked first day, nothing. Second day, halfway to the second day, suddenly everything turned, and the enemy was now under attack by the Spirit of God. So the priest was praying. He said, Ah, so why did God wait? Why did God wait for the f- uh, that they were killing the people of God? And the Holy Spirit said, No, 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 they were not desperate. It took them a day and a half to get to the point in which they were desperate. By that time, their ammunition had finished. The best, the, the best of their generals had been killed. Now, I'm adding my own words now. And it looked and said, there is nothing else we can do. Then this time, they turned to God and cried. And then God arose and his enemies were scattered. Let's continue reading. He said... Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. Verse 23 now. For those who don't know where they are just joining, we are in Isaiah chapter 45. God says, I have sworn by myself. The word has gone forth from my mouth in righteousness and will not turn back. Thus to me every knee we bow, every tongue we swear allegiance. They will say of me, now listen to this. It's going to come out of experience. Not no teaching. They will discover that only in the Lord are righteousness and strength. He said, men will come to him and all who were angry at him will be put to shame. Right now they are laughing at Christians. That there's probably people are praying. God said, don't worry. Every mouth that utters that word, listen to the word of the Lord. I will bring to a point where they will beg for prayer. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Everyone that has turned and mocked at the people of God. That they like to pray instead of doing what they are supposed to do. God said, I will take them to a place where they have wisdom. Where they have strength. They will use all their strength and all their wisdom. But they won't leave me with frustration. Then they will shout, help, somebody pray for me. That's the only time I'll become. One all that mock at you, that you Christians like to pray. God said, I will make you beg for prayer. And if you are so stubborn and you don't beg for it, I will kill you in pain. And you will go to your grave in anguish. Why? There's an oath I have taken. And that oath says, all who are angry at him will be put to shame. Is it what does the Lord do? It is the word of the Lord. So if you see anybody mocking at Christians, people pray too much. Say, oh boy, you will soon need prayer. <laughs> One day man was mocking. A Christian though. A devout Catholic. God gave me wisdom to tackle him daddy. This was many years ago, not now. I was still in Lagos. He was laughing at those who go for miracle meetings. And hope they pray in tongues. And he was laughing at all those Pentecostal activities. I've forgotten his name. But I asked him when the, in the laboratory that day. I called, him, I called his name. Let's just call his name Mr. Jumbu. That's not his name, all right? I mean, it was a Nigerian name. I said, Mr. Jumbu, are you saying that you don't need a miracle? That's, I, look, I caught him easy. It was not even hard. The Holy Spirit just said, I don't need too, too, depth, too much of a depth of wisdom. Just small. I said, you are telling me that you are right now. You are laughing at those who are looking for a miracle. I said, you don't need a miracle. He said, no, I'm okay. I said, you're okay. He said, I'm okay. I said, sir, you're okay. So what gives you the right 
to laugh at those who are not okay. See, there are those who are terminally ill with cancer. Can you help them? I said, there are those where their children are sick and there is nothing any doctor can do for them. I said, you have none of these problems and you are mocking at people who need it. May you not need a miracle. The man got my point. He kept quiet. That day, I trapped him so easily. Even me, I was really happy. Like, wow, that's, I didn't even need to. Arguing with him didn't even work. That's all I told him. I said, God, leave it to what was I saying in effect? Oh, God, leave it. Otherwise, you will need a miracle. There's one lady, a journalist. Her story was forwarded to me. I belong to a, a, a chat group of um, some guys. They don't talk often there. It's a religious group. But I think I'm the only person there that's not a Catholic. So one guy forwarded it in there. In fact, the person who started the chat group, he was, I'm sure he was like, Wow, said so Banky, this word, this thing you have said there is, is food for thought. Because one day they posted something that that person said. That lady obviously also is a Catholic. And she decided to be going around investigating in North America now, healing ministers. Trying to portray the fact that those who say that they do uh, spiritual healing, they are all false. Now, they are false people. But God knows when you decide that you will mock everything, including that which is holy. Please don't mock holy things. Young lady she was, and she was going around as a journalist, filming people, interviewing people, trying to see that these people are all frauds. And then one day she woke up in the morning, her side was paining her. So she went to go and see the doctor. They thought maybe it looked like gallstones. So they were operated and all that. Except that, except that they operated, and it turned out to be an advanced case of gallbladder cancer. No treatment. And she said, uh, she knows that some people will say now that's because she's mocking at ministers. I said, oh, you know, Holy Spirit is talking to you. I've seen some people will say. She said she has resigned herself to the hand of God and this and that, that the will of God will be done. So I asked them a simple question. Does she tell God, and I said it another way, I said, does she tell God his will or she tries to discover the will of God? Because apparently she has not bothered to discover the will of God. The person who posted, they tried to explain what she was saying. I said, you are not getting my point. How does she know the will of God? Many of my people there, they probably have not studied scriptures. So I said to them, go through the gospels. How many people came to Jesus and he said to them, it is not my will that you be healed. I said, I'm not saying she should join the Pentecostal faith people and claim it. That's not what I'm saying. I said, at least she should go on her knees and beg God to have mercy on her. Everybody kept quiet. That guy said, ah, Banky, what you have said there? There's a lot of sense to it. Too. I said, I said, you just, you say it's the will of God. I said, who told you it's the will of God? You think it's everything that happens as the will of God? I said, no. You can go to God and beg for mercy. And his mercy becomes his will in your life. I told them, has she asked for mercy? But do you know why she couldn't ask for mercy? Mercy requires apology. Mercy will require her to say, the preachers I went after, I should not have gone after them. Mercy requires her to say, you know, as an aside, you know our funny Lagos prophet, which I told you for more than, those who listen to me for more than, in fact, those who have known him for over 20 years, I've told them from the beginning that this guy is a false prophet, you know, okay. Now, recently something caused me to get into one of his videos, people talking about his, him, and I was now seeing comments below. And no matter what they say, you are my father and the Lord. <laughs> I was laughing at all of them. And I said, why are people this crazy? They know you don't know me. I think it was the Holy Spirit that just said, me, and I said, Banky, don't worry about them. It's not the man that they are defending. They are defending their own pride. They followed a the man for 10 years, despite all the warnings. They will not accept. Now all those who are testifying against him, they are false people. I said, he's the right one. You're not even saying that, ah, maybe our guy was weak in the flesh. He said, they are telling lies. I said, it is not the man they are defending. They are defending the fact that they have followed a wrong path for a long time. And they can't accept it now. Ten years of my life, arguing and defending this man and giving all my money. Do you know what I'm telling you fact? I still saw, I don't know where I saw this, but this really happened. 
There's a couple, I think it's in Australia also. You know this job, for, you know 419? For, you know what they call 419? For those who know what's 419, 419 is 419. <laughs> but in Nigeria, is the way we describe advanced fee fraud, obtaining by false pretenses. The, the number, for those of you who are lawyers, you understand, it comes from a segment of our criminal code. So that's how it is, 419. I don't know how they wrote it, but that's how it is. So these 419 people, they caught this white man and his wife in Australia. And they had finished them. No, they could finish them. They had finished them. Now, the man interviewing them, he said, I think he's a reporter. Of course, a reporter. And he realized something, that despite the fact that these people have been exposed to them as frosters, this man is still willing to bring out some more money so he can recover all the money he has spent. Now, this man is in his late 50s or 60s. And he is absolutely unwilling to accept that for the last 10 years, I've been sending all my money to one guy from somewhere, somewhere in Africa, most likely, or Asia, and that it's false. He said, no, that, that investment, he wants his cut of it. And the reporter didn't know how to explain to him. He says, sir, you have been defrauded. The guy was like, he's still hoping to get his money back. And it's the reason why, if the reporter leaves him alone, Somebody comes and says, please get another $10,000. You'll get your money back. He will bring it. One of my friends said, you actually know somebody that happened to in Nigeria. That, that one, the person in Nigeria is a froster. That one day his conscience smote him. And he wrote to the American or European man that he had been defrauding. That I'm sorry to tell you, this has been a fraud. The man says it's a lie. It's not a fraud. <laughs> that, you, that the deal is about to mature. You want to not deny me of my portion. Tell me how much money is needed. Let me send so that we'll stop all this nonsense. Ah. So the guy told his friends, I don't understand. Say, my mugu no won't stop. So he asked the guy to send. The guy sent more money. Even though he wrote the man and apologized and said, please, I'm sorry. This has been a scam. And the guy said, it's not a scam. The man being scammed was sending this scammer. It's not a scam. That all you want to do is the name of my portion. Now that the deal is about to ripen, I will not give up. That's why when God pushes people to a corner and they will not repent, he has no choice but to give them his final judgment. However, what he has determined will happen. And what has he determined? He said, I have sworn by myself the word has gone forth from my mouth in righteousness and will not turn back. What is that word? To me, every knee will bow. Every tongue will swear allegiance. They will say of me, only in the Lord are righteousness and strength. He said, men will come to him and all who were angry with him will be put to shame. Now verse 25 says, in the Lord, all the Christians in this nation we be justified and we glory. I just adapted that, that scripture. He said, in the Lord, all the offspring of Israel will be justified and we glory. The next line, no break. He said, Bel has bowed down. Nebo stoops over. All the things that they put their faith in, their hope in, the economists are frustrated. He said, their images their economic formulae are consigned to the beasts and the cattle. The things that you carry are burdensome, a load for the weary beast. So they stooped over, that's Bell and Nebo. They have bowed down together. They could not rescue the burden, but have themselves gone into captivity. Let me just read the next two verses. So listen to me, how old house of Judah. And all the remnants of the house of Israel, you who have been born by me, that is carried, born by me from birth, and have been carried from the womb, even to your old age, I will be the same. And even to your green years, I will bear you. I have done it, and I will carry you, and I will bear you, and I will deliver you. Say, so to whom will you liken me? And make me equal and compare me. That we will be alike. 
Those who lavish gold from the purse and waste silver on the scale hire a goldsmith and he makes it into a god. They bow down. Indeed, they worship it. They lift it upon the shoulders and carry it. They set it in its place and it stands there. It does not move from its place. Though one may cry to it, it cannot deliver. It cannot deliver him from his distress. Let me stop reading here. Now listen, in everything I said this, I think um, on Saturday was the last, uh, okay, I wasn't around on Saturday, sorry. Apostle Dami was the one that preached last Saturday. I, so I could not have been the one. The Lord is good. My wife said she was so blessed. My wife was so excited. <laughs> the Lord is good. I tried to listen online, but I was in a meeting, so Brenda kept on disturbing me. So I couldn't follow. If you are blessed, say amen. I mean, on Saturday, on Saturday, I don't mean now. On Saturday, the Lord is good, though. Can, why is he bowing his head like Nebu? <laughs> <laughs> so I was not around on Saturday. I think it was on Tuesday I said that. All right? God has determined that everything we have hope in, apart from him, will be frustrated. Everything Christians put their hope in, apart from in him, the Lord, will be frustrated. And I said something else the other time. I said, never, ever lose hope for anybody. Can I remember that? Please. Now, let me say this. See the things you see on this earth? Eh? They are not real in themselves. The spiritual things control the physical. One day something happened. I gave my car to my wife to do something. So she packed it and told the driver to go and pick it. All right? So when she got to work that day, she called me. I was just about to enter the bathroom. It was early in the morning. And said the driver ran the car. No, no, sorry. Before she got there, she got a call that the driver drove the car into the wall. The car was parked in front of the wall. The guy didn't know how to... She had said, can you drive? It's a manual car. She, he said, no problem. You, drive, you can drive manual. He got there. Whatever he did, he revved the car, started the car. The car was in gear. The car took off and went through the... <laughs> pulled down the wall. It's a fence. So they called her. Oh, yeah, she had not left home. She was downstairs. When she called, the way her voice sounded, it was something urgent. What is it? The driver just drove your car through the fence. Ha! I thought of the car. So I entered the bathroom. Now listen to this. And I leaned against the wall. I literally put my head against the wall. Now this had happened at least 10 minutes before she was called. So nothing less than 15 minutes had passed when I began to pray. And I said to God, please do not let my car be injured by the wall. Now, it had finished happening. No? I just said, no. But no, no, no. That, that, nobody's going to support this mode. I just leaned against the wall. I said, Father, you know I've told you. If you want to pray, I don't, this shouting is not necessary. I just leaned against the wall. I said, Lord, please. Keep my car. Don't let it be damaged. Next time my phone rang. My wife didn't know I prayed. She said, I'm here looking at the car. Say, you wouldn't believe it's this car that knocked down this wall. There's not a scratch on it. I said, Lord, thank you. I prayed the prayer long after the thing had happened. You know, I told her I don't believe that something has passed. God is the God of the past. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's not the only time such a thing has happened to me. That's what I mean. I don't... <laughs> when I hear about something that has passed, I pray. I don't say, it is over. No, I don't say it is over. Because the God I serve can take his hands, put into the back. Yes, Where am I saying? You know, there was a time eh? <laughs> something like this was going on in Nigeria, and worse was happening. There was a siege against Samaria. And things were so bad. People were selling, anyway, food was so costly. People were beginning to eat their children. I don't know how those guys used to reason, but <laughs> in that place, if food is <laughs> bad, children run away from home because the parents are. <laughs> Dangerous people. <laughs> I don't know the kind of people they were. That was when, okay, this one that we quote all the time. When he said, from where will I help you? So let me just open it so we can read it. Second Kings chapter 6. That was what happened. It was Ben Haddad that made, laid the siege against Samaria. Second Kings chapter 6. For that reason, verse 25. There was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver. 
let me see what a new living transition sees there. Just to get the value for that 80 shekels. Okay. Do you have a modern Bible that puts a value to it? The one I have here doesn't. Do you have one that puts a value to that 80 shekels? No, I want, I want dollar or naira. Anyway, let's not waste time. So the donkey said was sold for 80 shekels of silver. And a fourth of a cup of dove's dung, that was where some say that was a kind of vegetable, not really the literal dropping of dung. Some said, no, it's dung because the doves will pick um, fruits and then their droppings will have grain in them. I don't know. But anyway, a fourth of a cup of dung's dump, dung for five shekels of silver. So the king of Israel was passing by on the wall. And so a, a woman cried out to him, help my Lord, O king. And that's what I quote all the time. If the Lord does not help you, from where shall I help you? From the threshing floor or from the wine press? And the king said to her, what is the matter? And then she told the story of how the, uh, uh, had the son, maybe the son died because he was very sick, I don't know. And then it was time to eat the other one. The woman had gone to hide the, and you don't want to think about it. By the way, Moses warned about it. That if you sinned against God, you will do this. He warned them. So the king saw how bad things were. So he tore his clothes. And was very angry because of Elisha and his prophetic ministry. So he said in verse 31, May God do more to me if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, remains on him today. Now Elisha was sitting in his house. Now within the siege area, Elisha was present. And the elders were with him. And the king sent a man from his presence. But before the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, Do you see how this son of a murderer has sent to take away my head? <laughs> he said, Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold the door shut against him. That his master will soon come. When he can't come. <laughs> when his master will soon come. So when he, when he was still talking, behold, the messenger came down, said, Behold, and he said, Behold, this evil is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Then Elisha said, now this is where I'm going with the whole talk. Elisha said, we're now in chapter 7. Listen to the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time, a measure of fine flour will be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. That is, it's like me telling you now that, watch it. We need the next 24 hours. A dollar will be going for 200 naira. And you're like, excuse me, what did you just say? 200, 200, are you kidding? Now that's the kind of thing that he said. Or let's take a bag of rice. So at this time tomorrow, we're waiting. 50 kg bag of rice will be going for 2,005. You'll be like, excuse me, pastor. I, I like the anointing of God upon your head. <laughs> but that 2,005 is unrealistic. It's something like that. Now, the royal officer, on whose hand the king was leaning, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, could this thing be? He was saying, it can't be. Nobody can do it. If God wanted to do it, he would not be able to do it. Things are so bad. How quickly can you farm? How quickly? What he did not know. Let me tell you something the Bible says. He says, seek from the book of the Lord and read. None of these shall fail. Neither will any one of them lack the meat. Now, what is the reason? He said, because the mouth of the Lord has spoken, therefore his spirit has gone out to gather. When you use the word spirit, the Holy Spirit applies. But it's beyond that. Therefore, it means his angels have gone out to what? Gather. He makes his messengers what? Spirits. And those were his angels. His spirit has gone out to gather them. What was he saying? He was describing animals. You see a strange animal, a strange jackal in the city that was not supposed to be there. Yet, when it's mating time, he will find a mate. He said, why? He said, because the angels of God will go out. They will go and bring a mate and put the rare animals in a built-up city or turn it to a wilderness. That's what he was saying then. But the principle applies. Once the prophet spoke, what they did not know, that as soon as the prophet spoke, the angels had gone out to bring truckloads of food. They were on their way. 
heading towards Samaria. The man didn't know. He knew only one way by which God did things. They had to farm and harvest. Merchants had to bring food in trickles. What he did not know. Why am I telling this whole story? I said that physical things are not real. That's what, that's what I'm going to say. That farming that looks so real, God changed it overnight because it was never real. Only the word of the Lord abides forever. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The angel just, God just said to the, the, the Elisha, tell them food is coming tomorrow. They say, hey. Ah, and listen. Let me tell you something. Eh? I said to one guy today. He told, it, I, I woke up in the morning. I saw his status. I sent him a message. It's a young doctor that works with me. I said, how many times have I told you to stop displaying your ignorance on, online? That's what I said to him this morning. I said, I've warned you against displaying your ignorance online. I said, the Bible says even a fool, when he's silent, is considered wise. If you don't have what to say, shut up. Christians, if you don't have what to say, be silent. He said, what's going on in this country? What's the cause? I said, I don't know. Just then I said, I don't know. All I know is that my God is on the throne. And nothing takes him by surprise. He's a good God. Like we did last time, on last Tuesday. What did we say? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Say, the Lord is not 1,009. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. One man is doing some work for me in our house. He said, please choose. Which one do I pick of this? I told him this one. He said, that one is 3,009. I said, no problem. I gave him money on Saturday. Today, he went to buy. He said, sir, they insisted that he must pay 4,007 last. I said, check elsewhere. He said, I've gone everywhere. Everybody's insisting. That's Saturday. They didn't open yesterday. So the first working day that he went to pick the stuff, they had jacked up the price by more than 20%. So he said, what do I do? No, I told him. I said, I'm busy. Stop disturbing me. <laughs> I just told him, call so and so person. Ask him for advice. And I closed my phone. I said, I beg. I have other things on my head. If the guy says you should buy, buy. If he says you don't buy, don't buy. Just don't worry me. When Rufi sheet was 500 naira a bundle, my uncle refused to refuse to refuse to roof his house because it used to be maybe 200 naira a bundle. <laughs> that was those days. Sorry, I'm telling you, it's sap. Around sap time, 88. When he finally roofed the house, you know how much roofing sheet was? 5,000. <laughs> um, look, look. It's, my, it's somebody I know very well. Listen, when I said my uncle, I wasn't joking. The man said, eh, why would he pay 500 for a bundle of roofing sheet? He will never pay. They said, no problem. <laughs> finally, he went to pay. It was 5,000. He still roofed the house. You see, let me just tell you something. There's a way you should look at life. I learned this long ago. I learned this when I was a resident doctor. Now, we used to do one funny thing. Now, you know the way exams, if you know the kind, if you have done medical exams, medical exams has its own funny way. You can stand here and be watching them kill your friend. Are you getting my point? Because it's a clinical exam. So, you'll be waiting, palpitations. You know, your heart will be beating. So this one, we're doing postgraduate, was product, my postgraduate. Or any bad usage. So they were with my guy. And I was, on, oh, you know the way it is. Now first, they gave us some time, then the examiners appeared. And um, they started with my guy, not me. They were giving me all the to-do, to-do. So, so far after a while, I said, why am I even thinking about them? So I took my mind away from them. I started thinking about refreshment. That within the next two hours, maximum, I will have left here. We'll be in the lounge. I should, I should drink a Coke. I'll eat a meat pie, maybe a plate of rice. See, this exam will be over at that time. I started thinking of everything I would do afterwards. That was what I was thinking of until they called me and said, oh boy, it's your turn. And then they examined me. And you know, everything I said came to pass. We didn't die there. We left there. <laughs> And I actually went to buy a bottle of Coke and a meat pie or a plate of rice. I can't remember exactly what. But everything I said I would do, I did. So I learned that thing long ago. Some people are shouting, crisis, crisis, crisis. Like, no, the one that's going to Nigeria and I told people, I said, it does, I don't know, maybe that's my issue. I said, it can't bother me. It doesn't have the capacity to bother me. One reason, that's not the only reason. But one major reason being that, I've seen it before. But what, is that, what am I trying to say? Just think about a number of things. Focus on it. We will not die. 
Tell yourself, I won't die. I won't go naked. I won't go hungry. That's all of them in the scriptures. I will not die. I will live. The young lions can go hungry. I will not lack any good sense. These are, these are all in scriptures. Just for, see, and there's these two, like they say, we pass. I like the way people interpret scriptures. The Bible says, and it came to pass. So everything that is came in, we pass. <laughs> Do you get that point? Yes, it came to what? Pass. pass. Anything that comes, we what? We pass. So these two shall pass. And when I finish passing, nine the worker goes somewhere. Me, I'm heading towards where I'm going in Christ. Yeah, that's the attitude. That is the attitude. Anyway, they told that to my bad day. Now, please, I want you to understand this. A prayer I prayed to the Lord some years ago, not too long ago, maybe the last two years. I said, Lord, help me to see from above and not from beneath. I'd like to know, God, what are you doing? When I see things like that, I say, Papa, God, what exactly are you up to? Sometimes I get understanding. Other times, it's like, don't just bother yourself. Just watch. But one thing I know for sure, the Lord taught me this scripture long ago. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone forth from my mouth in righteousness I will not turn back. I have sworn that to me, every knee what? Bow. One of the things that God is doing, one of them, not saying the only thing, he's collecting his glory from Dangote. Yeah, he's collecting it from him. Because all of us thought, once the refinery starts working, our problems are solved. Do you know, this tall reverend that led prayer, he believed it. <laughs> they convinced me, and two of us encouraged one another. I know it's in the Bible like that. He said, the one making the wood and the one filing the iron, they will encourage one another, nail it down so that it does not fall. I, false God. You don't know it's the scriptures? You don't know it's there? No, it's there, it's there. Let's read it. Some people think I made this in some. Actually, I don't make it up. Sometimes I can't even remember where I read this, read this things from. But it's actually there. Encouraging one another. If anybody can find it for me. One was nailing something. The other one was making... They were encouraging one another. And said, just hold it. It will be okay. It will be okay. <laughs> Is that what? 41. Is it 44? 41. People don't confuse. Don't. Okay, somebody read the one in 41. 7. What does it say? The one in 44. What does that one say? Uh-huh. Thank you. That's it. That you are very correct. That is the very one. Ah, that's the one I'm looking for. That is it. those who are believing in false gods. Exactly. Aha, uh-huh, I've seen it. Very good. Let's do a new living translation. From verse five. Yeah, very good. So the lands beyond the sea watch in fear. Remote lands tremble and mobilize for war. The idol makers encourage one another. That's all. <laughs> Can you see them? They encourage one another, saying to each other, Be strong. The cover encourages the goldsmith, and the molder helps at the anvil. Good, they say, is coming along fine. <laughs> and is a false god. <laughs> Carefully, they join the parts of the refinery together. Sorry, of the idol <laughs> together. <laughs> then fasten the thing in place so it will not fall over. Say, but as for you, Israel, my servant, my chosen one, descended from Abraham, my friend, I have called you back from the ends of the earth, saying you are my servant. I have chosen you, I will not throw you away. So what am I saying to you? Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Why should you be afraid? For I am with you. Why should you not be discouraged? For I am your God. Thus says the Lord, I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my, I like King, King, King James, eh? my right hand of what? Righteousness. The New Living Tradition says, I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Now, this is where I'm going. Many of us have all, had all kinds of predictions. I know what predictions must fail. But prophecies don't fail. You hear what I said? What's predictions? You know, when this man does this, when he releases for it, when government does this, this will not happen. Everything that government has done, 
was supposed to have the opposite effect of what it's having now. I know what God is saying. I have spoken that it will not work. You know, it's in the Bible like that. You know what this is I'm saying? It said they looked for much. It came to what? The little they had, they brought it home and put where? In pockets that have holes. Why? Because God said, I have sworn. And the word has gone forth from my mouth in righteousness and will not turn back. That to me, every knee will bow. And every tongue will swear allegiance. They will say of me, only in the Lord and righteousness and strength. They will say of me, only, only in the Lord is prosperity. Listen, food is a gift of God. It comes from heaven. That manna you saw in the wilderness was, was not an accident. It's the way God sends food all the time. Yes, it does not always rain. Sometimes it rains through sun rays, through the green leaves, through the chloroplasts, and through photosynthesis, and all of those things. Sometimes that's how he does it. But you know what? It still comes from heaven. What did I say? It still comes from heaven. It doesn't come from any human being. And any day you start thinking it comes from human beings, God will shut the flow. Until you turn to him and say, only in the Lord are righteousness and strength. I was telling that Reverend Yinka and I were among the idol worshippers. You know, God is good. You know, he's good. He says, I don't mind. They don't know. They know not. Neither do they understand. So just forgive them. Just forgive them. But we will teach them so that when we manifest, and he will do it, and sorry, not next year, this year, he will bring peace and prosperity. Amen. This is your year of peace and fruitfulness. That has not changed. That has not changed. I said something last time, don't let anybody convince you otherwise. Because the things are bad now, so let's shut down our plan for opening a business. Things are bad now. I'm not telling you a joke. I'm not just preaching to you. It's something I told myself, just I had not told my wife earlier. I beg, if we hid money elsewhere, time to throw it away. But before the thing turns to dust in your hand. Somebody told me something today, I laughed. Hey, let me go over this again, quickly, so you understand. Should I go into this? Anyway, the person who told me that, look at this, is not bothering you. Eh? I asked myself, what do you want to do with money? Why were you trying to buy a dollar? He said, I'm trying. They offered him at 1850 He said, look at it, look at this. I said, but what do you want to do with it? He said, I want to preserve whatever little value is left. I said, at least now you understand why the price keeps going up. Yeah. And I want to tell all such people. Let me tell you, God. All the, now, here another word from the Lord. All those of you, let me quickly preserve my money, the value that's left, let me quickly rush and go and hide it in dollar. Thus says the Lord, dollar is still physical money laid up on the earth. And all flesh is what? Grass. grass. What you don't know, the grass does not wither and the flower fade because it likes to. Why does it wither and fade? Because the breath of God blows upon it. God said, wherever you hide your money, I will blow upon it. The only one that is preserved, the one that is hidden where? In heaven. Treasure in heaven is the only one that is preserved. The man told me today that I'm trying to preserve whatever value is left. I burst into laughter. I said, that is why the value keeps crashing. Because of people like you. But thus says the Lord. I am against all human wisdom. I will cause them to fail. Let me tell Christians, eh? Anytime you see adversity, you should rejoice. You know what James said? Count it all joy. No, we say, don't say count it all joy because they say, if I bought a new car, I say, oh, it's my wife's birthday, let's just count it all joy together. Do we do that? What does, what does James mean? He says, be very happy when you fall into diverse trials. Be very happy. Be very happy. Be very, very, very happy. Be very happy. And that's an instruction. Many things we see in scripture, we think they are Words of advice. Just be happy. Just try. Happy go good for you. You know, a good, a merry heart does good like medicine. It's not good for you to be. If you don't, no, that's not it. It's an instruction. Ed Luco used to say to us that God never gives advice. He only gives commandments. 
Whatever he says in person. You know, something Ken Higgins said in one of his messages. He said, now, it's a funny one. That I appeared, God, uh, the Lord spoke to him one day, that I appeared to your mother before you were born. And I said to him to call you this particular name. And he didn't call you that name. And the Lord said, it doesn't matter now. I said, no, it matters. Oh, it mattered. I don't know where I get my point. The woman was pregnant. The Lord appeared to her and told her, you're going to have a son. This is the name I wanted to call him. And she did not. And the Lord appeared to him much later. This time around, he's probably maybe more than 40 years after this particular incident. He probably in his 40s or 50s that time. I said, I told your mother to call you this name. But she didn't. But don't worry about it. It doesn't matter now. I, I told myself, no, something's out, out of order. Because God doesn't joke. If it never mattered, he would never have said it. So I told myself, that is part of the things that accounted for the sufferings of his childhood. Because that now he has overcome it. So the Lord said, it doesn't matter now. But it mattered then. Don't joke with God, even if it's trivial. Work hard to obey it. When it says rejoice when you fall into diverse trials, you have to practice it. Your money just loses half of its value. It's the one that's remaining. Take it to the mall. Sit down there. Buy one fat bottle of something that's legal for you to drink. <laughs> Buy food. If you see two of your friends passing, let them follow you. Say, guys, chop. Say, chop. And they're like, whoa, you finally got the job. Say, just chop first. You know, the mall has three ice cream sections. No, four. <laughs> Your wife is laughing. How I counted it. It's my personal grouping. In the main, you know, in ShopRite, there's the ice cream for the masses. That's group one. Group two. There's the one they have in all those eating, all these KFCs and all of that. That's group two. They have their own. Then this group three is one of those two that are exclusive and do only ice cream. The newer one is group three. The older one is group four. That is the one that is expensive. That's the ice cream that they use knife to cut, to serve to you. I've never gone there to buy ice cream in my life. (laughs) You say why? Pastor, I've never gone. No, it's always my wife that drags me along and, and does like this give me money. And I have a rule, I just stand behind. So everybody will know I'm not the one buying. She's the one buying. <laughs> because the men will now be copying me. So I just stay behind like this. So one day I told my wife, I said, just watch, just watch you. You see, everybody leaning against the counter is females. Check the people who are paying, they are male. <laughs> my wife says she does not care. Yeah. <laughs> Where am I going? So that the good day, leaning against the counter as a man for the first time. <laughs> so are things I don't do. No, my, no, ask my wife. I've never come home and told her that I went there. But if you see me there, there just know I'm going home. <laughs> I bought the ice cream and I'm rushing home. And I first call, are you at home? Take your ice cream home. You know, sometimes you have to do things that show that you're a loving husband. No. So... <laughs> I'm telling you now. No, there are some things I don't do for myself. Go ask my wife. It's only because of how I do it. Those days, those days, there's now that I, I prosper small and uh, apples are. When I was much younger, apples were too costly. I only used to eat mango. Why are you? <laughs> what are you doing eating apple? But you know what? When I met my wife, I used to buy her apple. Now you know they chop apple, should they chop apple? So <laughs> now my wife used to do one funny thing. I would buy something to take. I said, it is say no. If you eat with me, that's when it is sweet. Ah. See this girl. I'm checking the cost. You are talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> because left to me, I will use my portion to buy mango. <laughs> my wife will insist that we must eat it together. Thank God for this day, we just open free, just kind of just a chop. Those days, for where? I think you should eat expensive things, so it's against my religion. <laughs> Even when you dash me, I know they chop them. 
No, I'm not exaggerating. You don't know me. I will go and give somebody else. And I used to, me and theory, I had theories. My theory was based on economics. Is it theory, theory or utility? The amount of satisfaction derived per cost. I weighed it, and for me it was not worth it. So only when you dash me, I will wrap and go give person. No, I'm not kidding. I used, I used to do things like that. You literally will give it to me. I will look at it. I will do my mental calculation. You did it. I said, but I have a name, neighbor. She would think I'm a very nice guy. So I would take it. I would actually knock. Because if I eat it, eh, it will be like a waste of money. I'm not saying it should be like me. But when I'm married, oh, God. I actually go to where they sell things, price it, and pay. I go to that expensive ice cream place. And my wife just said, let's say, I want to buy ice cream. I've learned one thing, not to ever say no in that area. I was like, what she doesn't know that a lot of times is my mouth that is saying yes. My stomach is just one. <laughs> I'm used to it, and I know they complain again. <laughs> Look, guys, have, that's some things you have to learn. I hope you're getting my point. Pastor Dami. As soon as you leave here, you must go there. If you go home, if you go home, your tire will bust. As soon as we close, go downstairs. Do you get my point? <laughs> Say, go to that place. And don't be in a hurry. <laughs> and don't get and be speaking in touch. <laughs> Stand there and eat from it. I hope you're getting my point. This man of God, he can do calculate. You know how I know? I used to be like that too. My wife used to do one thing those days. Those very early days. She just do something just to make me feel bad. Which is that this thing, I will eat it. I know it's costly, but I will eat everything. One day she took, was just before we got married, one day she came, opened my drawer, looked for the last money, they took it and went away to go and buy biscuits. <laughs> I remember the biscuit till today. It was one of these cookies. Later on, I saw her later. You know, you know that was the last money I had. They said I knew. That's why I took it. <laughs> I said, it's not your fault. <laughs> In this life, one day, I will prosper. <laughs> I will buy you biscuit, you go choke on them. <laughs> the Lord is good. So, now we're talking about cancer or joy. Eh? So, that's what I'm saying. You just call your friends, sit down there, all right, and eat. Buy expensive ice cream and eat. And finish the money. When I say, so what is happening? So I just discovered that um, the value of the money I had saved up had gone down by half. That's why you are eating it. Yes. They'll be looking like, did we just eat jazz? <laughs> See, no, it's not jazz. He said, count it all joy. joy when you fall into diverse trials. That's why somebody told me today that it looks like what is happening is not bothering you. I said, no, it's not bothering me. It doesn't concern me. Honestly, God gave me that peace of mind. But I want to give the people of God a word again today. You will not go hungry. Amen. No, it's going to wipe out every idol from your heart. From your life. It will wipe out every nonsense out of your life. But you, you will not go hungry. Amen. I said it on the last time, alright? I said it last time, let me say it again. For many people, this is, it is now they will build a house. I gave you a commandment last time, let me give you again. If you go to God and say, Lord, you know, I asked you for this kind of car, can we reduce it because the clearing of that one has gone up? God will let the money you had, he will make you solve problems with it. Just go back to him and say, Lord, I want to give you thanks. Because with you, there is no variableness or shadow of turning. What does shadow of turning mean? I said it last time. It means that the circumstances around do not change you. It does not change what you are able to do. When he was saying, what was he saying? When he made the promise to the woman, she was young. Sarah is now an old woman. He said, God said, ah, I should have given you those, that children, those children when I first uh, called you. So it's too late now. So Hagar will have to do the work. He said, look, 
It's called shadow of turning. The circumstances do not change what he does. The Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. I was saying, so God is taking his glory. In the midst of it, we must remain steadfast so that we become that which God is making us into. In the midst of everything, okay, well, there's something I was saying earlier, let me quickly say it and then we'll pray and then we'll close. I was explaining that please don't sound like the people of the world. As I was having somebody, I said, don't go online. See, there's something about people, like, for example, when they want to criticize government, they all come together to do it. it it's sweet. It's sweet in their, in their hearing. Government is foolish, yes, it's not clueless, yes. They will be saying, they'll be saying everything that, they, that government did not do. Because I want to give you the word of the Lord. Don't join them. What did I say? For whatever reason, do not join them. If you must say anything, quote a scripture and declare what God will do in your life. Did you hear that? What did I say? If you must say anything, say it again. That's it. If you must respond, quote the scripture. And it's not a big scripture. Don't go and look for some hidden scriptures from the end of Revelation. I hope you get my point. It's simple things like no good thing will live with told from those who walk uprightly. So in the midst of all of this, I will not walk wrongly. It's a simple thing like the Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack. It's a simple thing like in the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. Simple scriptures like he will make all grace abound towards me. I will have all sufficiency in all things. And I will abound to every good work. That's the simple things like that. And then you now say your own out of it. In the midst of everything, I won't, not, nothing bad will happen to me. I hope you're getting my point. Listen, I was reading a particular scripture, have you? I've not finished reading it. All right? Because we all know it. We're in 2 Kings chapter what? Chapter 7. Yes. So Elisha said, listen to the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Tomorrow about this time, a measure of fine flour will be sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. The royal officer on whose hand the king was leaning answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord should take win- make windows in heaven, could this thing be? Then he said, Behold, you will see it with your own eyes, but you will not eat of it. Because he was doubting the power of God. Now for time's sake, we won't read all of this. But remember that there was a siege around Samaria, that was a problem. And these four leprous men decided that the siege, the hunger was too bad for them, and that there was no need to sit in the city until they die. Let them risk their lives and go to the camp of the Arameans, okay, the Syrians, and go and see if they will give them something to eat. When they got there, what they did not know was that God had planned something. To deliver his people. You didn't know that Eli- Elisha and those elders that were with him probably had been making intercession. Maybe they gathered to pray. We don't know. But what happened was that these lepers got there and they decided, of course, they came to beg for food. They went from one camp to the other and found nobody. What was the, was the reason? Because the Lord had caused the army of the Arameans to hear a sound of chariots and a sound of horses. Even the sound of a great army. So that they said to one another, the king of Israel has hired the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come up again upon us. Therefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their donkeys. Everything was left in the camp. So when these men got to the outskirts of the camp, they entered one tent. They found food to the earth they drank. They carried from there silver and gold and clothes and went and hid them. Then they returned and continued to do that. Then one of them said to the other one, verse 9, to the rest, It's not good for us to keep this to ourselves. Let's go and tell. So they went and told. You know the story. And then, um, verse 16. So the people went out and plundered the camp of the Arameans. Then a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel 
according to the word of the Lord. Now let's just finish this. Because the man that doubted God was appointed by the king to go and man the gate. But the people trampled upon him and the gate and he died just as the man of God has said. Who spoke when the king came down to him? The Bible says, it happened just as the man of God has spoken to the king, saying, two measures of bad, this is verse 18 now, for a shekel, and a measure of fine flour for a shekel will be sold tomorrow, about this time, at the gate of Samaria. But that man who said, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? The, the, king, the prophet has said to him, behold, you will see with your own eyes, but you will not eat of it. Verse 20 says, and so it happened to him. For the people trampled on him at the gate, and he died. I read this portion to let us understand something. Life is spiritual. Everything that is going on around you is spiritually controlled. If God speaks against it, it turns the other way. A day of famine, next day of abundance. That was what they experienced. And as soon, listen to me, while you keep your eyes on the things that are not seen, this will be your testimony every day in Jesus' name. Now, that's not a joke. Every day you will have a testimony. I said every day you will have a testimony. It it will happen for many people. They won't want this thing to end. Because it will be like, man, it was sweet. But you know what? It will come to an end. Why? Because I wanted to get there today, but then for certain reasons I couldn't get there. And I think I did what the Lord wanted me to do. Because we are going to, I said I would do it last time, but I didn't do it. Now I'm saying I would do it today. Let's see what we can do it next time. We are going to release, because what happens is this. Remember, let me summarize all of this with this, okay? We said there is a prophecy that the man of God, Pyelton, gave. Remember that prophecy? Uh-huh. And along the line, we've been explaining that the fulfillment of it is dependent upon the church making certain adjustments. Do you remember that? And we said the church is the light of this nation. And we said what we must do intercessors. God will raise intercessors. And what intercessors will do is pray about the situation of the church. Because the church is a light. And once we do that, last time we took time out, that's the one before, to reject the spirit of Jezebel. Remember that? We took on the spirit of Elijah, the Holy Spirit, and declared the word of God against prophets that prophesy by Baal. And that's the spirit of Jezebel. Because what they do is that they bring evil into the land, and they bring violence into the land. And we spoke against them. And listen, the reason why it's important we do that Okay, I wanted to do that today, but I didn't prepare myself very well. It's to start today by just altering some of those things we read last time. And I think, if you remind me, we'll do it again and again. We need to keep speaking against them. By, cooper- by so doing, we are cooperating with the Lord to get the church cleansed. And once that is done, we are injecting light into the land. And once light comes, listen to this. Judgment comes to an end. Mercy is activated. Mercy is activated. Now, for mercy to have effect, again, you declare words of mercy. That's what I wanted to do. You declare words of mercy. You declare words of mercy. If you don't declare words of mercy, judgment we want to stop, but there will be nothing to push it away. So there's an order to it. Many Christians, what they do is that they just come up, declare words of mercy. The words of mercy don't work while judgment is active. I hope you're getting my point. That's why Jesus Christ waited for John to preach the baptism. He had to give them a gospel of the baptism for repentance, for the forgiveness of sins. When the people receive forgiveness, then their oppression or their sufferings became oppression. Before they had received forgiveness, their suffering was justified. But after they received forgiveness... Then their sufferings became what the Bible calls what? Oppression. So Jesus now came doing good and healing what? All who were oppressed. It's only after you have turned sufferings to oppression that healing starts happening. What what, what do I mean by that? It means that before then, the suffering was just. But after after, um, repentance, After light has come into the hearts of the people, then they are no longer supposed to be under oppression. They are no longer supposed to be suffering. So every suffering they suffer after that day is called what? Oppression. That is when you release the word of mercy into the air 
and it starts triumphing over judgment. I hope you're getting my point. But you have to do it. And this land has, hey, oh, I finished my message, but let me just say something about Nigeria. You want to know something about Nigeria? Please, if you are not in Nigeria, forgive us. We are solving some issues here. This is our Jerusalem. This land has suffered. This land there eh, has suffered. You know what they call suffering? Most people that God give power and prosperity, they don't love the land. One guy told me, he said, now, he said, if I drop this name for you, every single person here will know the person. One of the top politicians in Nigeria. From the south. So when I first met the man, he gave me one advice. You know what the man said? Just what Peter Obi said that his teacher told him at Kellogg Business School. That the problem with you people in Africa is that you don't love yourselves. You don't love your country. That when you have money, you store it in dollars. I told my classmates today. They were talking, talking. I said, hey, listen, guys. They said, can you imagine? In something, yeah, yeah, is this 16? How many years has APC been in power? Nine years. He said, can you imagine that APC made dollar at 160? It turned to 1,000 something? In just nine years, I said, relax. Nigerians made dollar at 50 combo to the dollar. Let's put it that way. And all together, in 40, in 50 years, less than 50 years, Abi, yes, we turned it to 2,000 naira to the dollar. It's all of us. Don't blame any APC. This man said the first day, he, my guy was telling him, the first day he met that man, you know what he advised him? He told him, buy dollars every month. That was the advice given by one of the top rulers in Nigeria to a man he's meeting on how to secure his financial future. This land has been hated. Usually by those who complain the most. So that was the advice a prominent leader in Nigeria gave him on how to secure his financial future. He said, every month, make sure you buy some dollars. This was given to him years ago, not today. It's a nation where once you bless somebody a little bit, what he does is to strip as much of the nation as possible to go and enrich another one. In America, three out of four doctors, if they are black, are Nigerians. Some of them trained in America, but most trained down here. Three, now, did you get what I said? If you enter a hospital and you see 20 black doctors, you know you've just met 15 Nigerians. <laughs> it's a nation that everybody came to rape and pillage, to strip it down. The painful part is that they complain. Whoa, they can complain. The robbers are the ones that complain the most. But they never accept it's their fault. And what government does wrong, actually, is not giving them enough avenue to do what they want. I said, look, Nigeria, things are too tight for us to sit down here and be scraping money to pay for those who live abroad. I don't think it's right. That's my own opinion. You can disagree with it. If you're abroad, please walk abroad and earn money there and live there. That's good. I don't think it's right in the face of things that are happening. We will sweat here Gather plenty naira, which is one reason why God is doing what He's doing. To tell you, if you love this land, you know I've been telling you again and again, Christians, that thus says the Lord, if you want this nation, I will give you. And some of us have to say to Him, we actually want the, the country. This same advice a politician gave one of my colleagues. When Dollar first started doing like this about two years ago, one of our brothers here, a thought came to his mind. So I let him go and take his money and store it in dollars. And his wife looked at him and said, if God catches you, she wants, look, all his interest is in her heart. Oh. But she said, with all the prayers we are praying, please, oh, my husband, I don't want trouble in my home. Let's wear that, don't worry, let's, wear, let's, let's just wear that together. Like I said, anytime I'm driving, it pains me, eh? it's very at night, I go to red, red, red light, I stop. Guys, you blow past, Feel as if Look at this idiot. Why are you stopping for a red light? But you know, I can't move. I just keep stopping. Why? I said, Lord, somebody has to sow a seat for order. 
That's all. Me too, I know where I'm going. But I keep on telling myself, somebody has to sow the seed for order. If it pains me too much, I will pray that they switch off the lights. But I will not join those who blow past it as if it is not there. I mean, it's not like I have an emergency. So you see me, sometimes at night, I just go there, I stop. I'm the only person. Hmm? Vroom, keke will pass, boss will pass. The one that used to annoy me, eh? God has helped me with patience. Finally, when it's not my turn to go. One guy on the other side still wants to go. Those are the times I wish I was driving a 911. <laughs> and that's why God didn't give me 911 to drive. Because I won't, I won't slow down. Come and jab me. Whether you are keke or boss or Mrs. Ben, just come and jam me. Because in my mind, you don't know the, 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 you know, the, the zeal for, you know, are you getting my point? The zeal for righteousness that's been in my heart all the way. I endured too many standing still. It's not my turn. You want to still struggle with me. I go take the nose of my one one, push into the pole. Go and wait. But thank God he didn't give me 911, so I'm still forced to stop. But I did do a good job. You know, the Bible says the righteous are what? Bold as a lamb. I know I'm, I have, I'm right. It's only when you are determined to jam me that I finally get out of the way. I can't do your work. <laughs> so get away, my friend. <laughs> the Lord is good. Listen, we need to continually. So now, my last charge to you is that be amongst those who God is using to claim a peace of this land. I hope you're getting my point. To establish peace and prosperity. But let me say this to you and I close with it. You will inherit the land. Amen. Father has given a lot of thanks. And I wanted to say that at least seven times before we go. Say, Lord, I will inherit the land. I will inherit the land. I will inherit the land. Oh, God, you will prosper in this land. You will, you will, you will. You've sown seeds that God said, I must cause to germinate. I will pour water upon, upon the seed that you have sown. You will inherit the land. I say you will inherit the land. In the name of Jesus we have prayed. The Lord is good.